Thank you, sir. All right. Let me know if you're still good with it. You're still good? All right. Happy New Year. Everybody's well? Yeah. All right. I mean, you know, I can tell you, you know, we, we've been here for two years related to COVID. It has really um, taught us a lot as a community and definitely as an educational platform. We have learned so much of how to interact with new variants uh, every single day and at the same time being able to build a blueprint that will allow us to create a safe educational environment in Hillsborough County. And you see that throughout the state and you, and you see it throughout the nation. But I want to take, take the time today and just really recognize that we're in a different place as a community than we were when we left for December 17th uh, related to uh, starting our winter break. Um, when we left, we were around 3 to 4 percent positive rate within Hillsborough County. And where we sit today, we're close to 14 percent as a positive rate. And um, this is all due to, to, the, um, to the time that we have spent with our friends, our loved ones during gatherings of the holidays, which we all desperately need. But it has really started to see that uh, coupled with a new variant that has really transitioned and you start to see a spike within our community. And this is more for us as a school district to be able to recognize a new variant that has transitioned through our, to our homes um, and it will eventually impact our schools every single day in our classrooms. And for us, it's all about making certain that, you know, Hillsborough County Public Schools will remain vigilant in making certain that we put mitigation strategies in, in place and continue to make certain that we are educating every one of our employees, we're educating every one of our community members, our stakeholders, our students, all to continue to take proactive strategies to, to really help us alleviate the spread of, of COVID-19 and the new variants that we're facing. One thing we know that we'll continue to do is encourage to wear masks when you're indoors. Uh, this continues to be a signal that is validated through the CDC guidelines. And also, you know, those continue to say that this is part of a, a best practice. So in time we're indoors, we're asking and we're encouraging the, for, for masks to take place. At the same token, being able to make certain that all of our employees, all of our students, uh, whether you're inside the classroom, in common areas, in our community, continue to take the necessary steps to be successful with washing our hands, making certain we're continuing to clean all the surfaces that we interact with, and just being very mindful of how we disinfect um, any touch point that we come and interact with every single day. Uh, one thing that we have done as uh, started on Sunday is that we made certain that we put all, started all of our HVAC systems so that we are primed and prepared for all of our students for a safe return on tomorrow, on Tuesday, to make certain that we do not have any gaps uh, where there are potential areas and make certain that we have that airflow that's circulating through every one of our facilities in a proper manner. As I remind you, we were the first in the nation to, to bring on board MERV 13 air filters that's really going to help with us with moving those particles and, and having that great success. Um, one thing I do have is, uh, is a very important message for all of our, our parents, our students, and also of our employees. I want to be very clear that anyone who has COVID-19 symptoms, to please stay home. Um, this is only going to help us uh, in, in the long run become healthier in, in our community, in our schools. So those who have any type of symptoms, we're asking you to stay home. We are, we are here as an organization that will help you as a learner be successful for your time out. We have a number of uh, techniques and strategies and resources to, to, to help with that process. But if we have symptoms as an employee at the same token as a student, please stay home. We will help you to identify um, if there's a need for an immediate testing location. One thing we see our community continues to open their, their you know, many additional testing uh, sites to, to help with rapid assessments. From an employee perspective, we'll continue to partner with TGH and our, and our local um, health providers to have rapid, rapid assessments uh, for our employees. When you have 25,000 employees, one thing we want to do is for them to have a, ge a geographical location that's close to their home or their school that they can go if they have symptoms so they can get that uh, immediate response so we know how we can continue to help them be successful and keep them in our classrooms to help children. Um, there are some, um, we need to clarify what uh, CDC guidelines are asking and requiring or recommending related to quarantining process. 
if a student is uh, identified as a positive COVID-19 and, and is a positive assessment, the CDC guidelines identifies that that individual can sit out for five days and come back to our school for five days with a mask. We, with House Bill 1B, we cannot implement the CDC guideline recommendation. We had, so those individual students who are positive for, for COVID-19 will have to sit out in quarantine for 10 days and at the same token not return until they um, have uh, either a, a negative assessment or no longer uh, assessment that confirms that they have uh, a COVID. We do have a number of, uh, of home assessments that we can give families, those in need, schools have them if they, if they need them. We only have, you know, we were given around 40,000 from the Department of Health, so schools have them, so a family in need, we're there to make sure we can close that gap. As it relates to, to teachers, we're going to implement the CDC uh, guidelines because we can do that with adults and, and not with uh, students related to adults. So if adult is positive and we sent a communication out, I sent a communication out to the entire organization yesterday just recognizing that if they are positive, they sit out for, they can have two options to sit out for 10 days or they can sit out for five days and after day five, they can come back and wear a mask for five days consistently. Um, that's going to allow us to be able to have our practitioners in front of children. We'll do it in a safe manner. And at the same token, being able to make certain that we have, or we're able to fill the, the large number of vacancies that we're seeing in education, not only throughout the state, but throughout the nation as well. Um, as it relates to where we are for students who have to isolate during this time, because we know that uh, you know the time off, we've had a lot of opportunity to to, ga to attend gatherings with our family, friends, and loved ones. We continue to have paper, which is a 24/7 resource for students who are in grades six through 12. It is a 24 uh, you know hour tutorial services to help our students continue to make certain their instructional momentum is uh, is seamless as they are you know as they're out of our classrooms and at the same token we have a new initiative for elementary students as well for those who are out from grades uh, from kindergarten to grade uh, to fifth grade any of our students who are out have accessibility to two options. They can uh, connect with teams on, on our website and they have access to teachers in our core content area with math, literacy, and science where they can meet and, and gain access to additional services. And if they do not have access to Wi-Fi or connectivity or to a laptop, we're asking our parents to, to, to reach out to the schools. We can try to help as much and often as we can. But there's also a hotline for individuals in elementary that they can gain access to that information as well. And all this information can be accessed through Canvas. And we ask our parents to take advantage of these two types of scenarios so that we can continue to have success. One thing we thank our community for uh, in the Department of Health, and they have expanded the number of testing sites. We now have two new sites open. One is at Lee Davis Community Resource Center, as well as the Plant City Community Resource Center as well. You can find this, uh, all this information at hillsborough.org uh, backslash um, stay safe. Um, and that will be able to identify additional testing sites and also vaccination sites. Our teachers, our staff, our, our, our leaders, our district staff, our practitioners, our board, they've been heroic for the last few years. They continue to be faced with challenges every time they turn around, and they continue Of our employees to make certain that we are successful. One thing we uh, I want to do is take a minute to to highlight and and say thank you to all of our health experts, our medical health experts that continue to to go over and beyond to make certain that uh, we create a, a safe community through vaccination opportunities and rapid assessment opportunities 
and now we know that our young our young students at the age of five and up are, are have availability for access to the vaccination and then those students who are 16 years or older that has had the vaccination they now have accessibility to a booster shot if they've had their vaccination um, you know for a period of, of six months so vaccinations continue to be free of charge and we ask those uh, who feel most comfortable with it to put themselves in a situation to, to continue to help this community. This is a community um, effort where we can't do this in isolation as a school district. So we're asking our community members and our families, our loved ones, as, as you interact, whether it be at the home, at the dinner table, or, or anywhere within uh, civic centers, is to make sure we take the right uh, the proactive steps to create the safest environment possible continue to, to leverage um, all the resources that I spoke about so that we can create a safe environment educationally. Um, at this time, I'm going to uh, I'll ask our, our board chair, uh, Mrs. Combs, to, to come and step up to address a little bit, and then I'll come back and answer, and answer any questions that you may have as we move forward and get ready for the second semester, which starts tomorrow upon our return. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Superintendent Davis. I just want to say that it's, it's hard to imagine here we are in the second year and we're continuing with COVID and how it's impacting our schools and students. But I think what we're seeing more than ever is our schools are really at the center of the community and how important it is for students to be there and consistently have access to public education. We know that many children need that every day. They depend on food, they depend on the education, and they depend on the social and emotional impact of schools. So I think first and foremost, to thank the principals, the teachers, the faculty, the staff, the bus drivers, everybody who's working so hard to give kids some kind of normalcy during a time that's so difficult. I think we're always going to think we thought, is it going to be here for a year? Here we are year two, and we're learning that we need to adapt and live with this because we can't have children out of school for years. And we know that students belong in schools. That's where they need to be. So we want to continue to encourage people to wear masks, to do all the things that we need to do. If you feel sick or you have symptoms, make sure you stay home because we really want to make sure we continue to decrease and not increase. We anticipate a spike, but thankfully, this variant is not as powerful as the last one. And so I know, I'm sure everybody here knows many, many people have had this newest variant. And I think we need to realize that we need to continue giving kids the support that they need by con continuing to keep our schools open and making sure that's an, a place where students can go and feel safe and continue to thrive in their educational needs. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Films. All right. So yes, sir. Superintendent Davis, let me just ask you to repeat yeah. a couple of bullet points. Here. Yes, sir. Number one, masks are encouraged but not mandated because of the state law. And secondly, that's correct. If someone feels symptomatic, a student. That yes, is, sir. They, they need to get tested on their own outside of the school. Yes, sir. We want them first and foremost. We we cannot mandate mask uh, with House Bill One B. Uh, we can we we'll continue to encourage when and we'll continue to do so as an organization, especially as Ms. Combs said, the center of the community. Um, as it relates to assessments, we are asking that uh, any student that has symptoms to please connect uh, with outside accessibility to go get uh, assessed as, as quick as you can. Um, to stay home first and foremost and then start to start to move toward a that home assessment or going to a provider to be able to have that assessment so we can determine whether or not they have um, been identified as a positive case we do as i said earlier we were given uh, a number of home assessments from the department of health we wish we had some you know plenty to give out to every student that we that we uh, within our organization we just don't have that many we were given around forty thousand, and we'll allow those to be extended to the any student or parents in need limitations that the district has um, in you know implementing mask mandates or going virtual because of state yeah. regulations that That's are good in place and how you're managing yeah, so you know, with with House Bill One B, it really gives all the rights to um, to the families. One thing as organizations, we cannot uh, mandate vaccinations for our employees. We cannot um, implement masks for our students. It gives that parent a right. As it relates to being able to transition from brick and mortar to all of virtual, there's no longer an emergency order in place that allows us to receive funding for that. So while you know we it'd been nice to be able to take you know four or five days after the holiday to go all virtually as a school district, which now we know we are capable to do, we just don't have the luxury related to the instructional time to have time on task. 
as you all know, we're not in a financial situation to um, to take that risk, uh, so that we're so we're unable to do it, and that's all just linked to recommendations and new statute requirements outlined uh, through Tallahassee. Where do you stand with staffing? I mean, it is, it, obviously, it's a challenge across the board. Yeah. With, with bus drivers, with with teachers, sure. with even support personnel. Where do you where are you right now? You know, you? <clears throat> related to let's talk about where we are from. Um, you know, starting school tomorrow. We have, or you know, let's just say a little bit over 2,000 uh, of, uh, you know, I say 2,000 jobs that have to be picked up tomorrow because individuals are out. When you're looking at 25,000 employees, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's a lot. However, the biggest thing is we have over an 80% fill rate for tomorrow for those positions. Um, as relates to the staffing, it's a at scale. It's a national issue. It's it's not a Hillsboro connected issue. We have over 400 instructional vacancies that we have uh, district staff covering. That we have uh, you know coaches covering. All we have teachers covering classrooms. All to make certain that children have, are exposed to high quality experiences. In addition to that. We still we still issue with with busing related to being able to hire uh, you know bus drivers to come in and work with our organization. So we have a number of positions, over 100 positions that we are are having to hire. We're, we're hiring every single day. We have a number of job fairs, but we see this growing legs. That you know I've said it before. Over 4,000 instructional positions are open throughout the state of Florida. And that means that uh, over 80 plus thousand students aren't being served by high quality educator. And when you look at busing, there's around 18 to 1900 busing vacancies in the state of Florida as well, meaning over 150,000 students potentially aren't being picked up on time and being able to transition to school in the state. So there's a lot of work to do. We have a lot of um, opportunity to compete with a lot of providers as well. So, you know, we compete every day with, uh, with Amazon and UPS. However, working for Hillsborough County gives you benefits and it gives you retirement. So uh, for those who are interested and, uh, you know, and this is a really good place to work every day. I just wanted to ask Nadia a quick question sure. if I could. You've been, you've been pretty vocal about some of the concerns and frustrations you've had with Tallahassee in the past. Your hands are kind of tied now that we're in another wave. Is that is that just another frustration to you that there is only so much you can do right now? You know, <clears throat> I think that we've come to terms with that. We've realized that, you know, that's we're not going to be able to make that choice. So we are just adjusting to that and we're just trying to make sure that people know, hey, do the best you can, mask up. If you don't feel well, stay home. So I, I feel that frustration's over. Let's focus on now making sure that the learning loss isn't there. Make sure that the social, emotional, the mental issues, because I think that later on we're going to see the mental health is even a larger issue that we're seeing. You know, teen suicide in females has increased by 56%. We're seeing so many, so many other issues related to COVID. So I think we need to look at what we can deal with and what we can solve and focus on those, not things that we can't, we can no longer, you know, that we can't change. What would your message to parents be <clears throat> and students? And Addison, you can maybe answer this as well, but who may be concerned about going back tomorrow? Um, what would your message be from the district and the board? I think just make sure that if you don't feel well, stay home. Make sure you're going out and being tested. Wear a mask. We encourage that. But most importantly, just be happy to go back to school. Kids need that. We, we cannot go for years and years. We have to learn to live with what we have now. And we want to make sure that kids are in school. You can see when I walk into the school, kids are happy to be in school. For a long time, they haven't had anything normal. So the new normal for them is being at school, having to wear a mask or not wear a mask, making sure that if, if a child's wearing one or is not wearing one, nobody is bullying or saying anything negative. That is a, a choice from a parent. And making sure that kids are just that we continue to focus on them for the social, emotion, and obviously academic. Because long term, this is going to be a big issue in our society. So we want to give kids um, the encouragement to know this is the right place, you're safe, and you're here. And the teachers, administrators are going to do everything to make sure you have a safe and wonderful year. Superintendent Davis, specific to the Omicron variant and its more mild yep. symptoms, can you speak to how this is changing the conversation you're having with parents and students <laughs> to take every symptom seriously? You know, we, we, we've seen different variants, you know, that we've been exposed to, and it's kind of really changing the, the, the landscape. Every variant has their different impact. The Delta variant, I mean, we, we opened school this year 
thinking that we were going to have greater success uh, related to hit and stride because we knew that COVID was upon us. We've kind of lived it before, but the Delta variant had such a significant impact on people related to their symptoms that it really, really hurt us as we tried to open up. Uh, the field positions, more students were out. It just had a serious impact. We know the new variant uh, from our side of it is has more impact of a stronger cold um, you know, but regardless, uh, you know, for us, uh, you know, I don't care what variant it is, if we have symptoms, our students need to stay home. And I get it. It puts a lot of pressure on our families when they have to go to work as well. But if we do not take it serious and we allow that learner to come to school, now we are potentially in, you know, infecting so many students that are in that short radius around them. And we have a number of students that, that start missing school. And, and miss, you know, Chair Combs spoke about it. We have significant learning loss since of March 2020 when students left. You know, we have we are trying to cut that down every single day, but it's a reality. We we'll, we could potentially see with the influx of, of positions being open, the influx of quarantine students at the beginning of the year. We can see a, a, another slide academically, which is not okay. And I want this community to know that we're putting every strategy that we can in place to be able to eliminate learning loss, to be able to accelerate learning, and to how our students be able to meet grade level standards. But it's not, you know, it's not going to happen, you know, at, at, a, at a flip of a switch. It's going to have to be systemic. We're going to have to have a robust summer school offering that we did last year once again to be able to help our students have that confidence to be successful um, every single day. And back to the question that, that we asked related to our parents who may have reluctancy for sending our students back, Hillsborough County has proven success to be able to open our doors and educate our children every single day in a successful manner. And we'll continue to do that. And that's hats off to this and every employee in this entire organization. They've identified students that have symptoms. Um, we have COVID leads in every one of our schools. We put sanitation stations. Our operations team is putting all the resources that our students need to be able to help combat that and our teachers being able to be mindful about their student interactions within those classrooms. So we've done it in a successful manner. We'll continue to do it. The biggest thing is, is we've got to just be mindful of what's going on in the community to help us in the school so we can continue to keep our doors open to continue to keep students in our classrooms every single day so we can educate them and help them reach and obtain success. If if a parent still decides that they want their child to learn virtually, is there a system in place for that or is that over? Um, our window is, is recently closed for the second semester, but we'll take in consideration. If there's a parent that really, really um, needs their, their learner to be in a virtual setting, then we'll open those, we'll, we'll, work, we, we'll work with that, that family immediately. The problem is, is we gotta make certain that that, that learner is in good academic standard standings because transition into to virtual it's not easy i can tell you i my daughter this year because of her medical situation transitioned from brick and mortar to transition to virtual and it's just a different game so um you know she's having great successes but she also has her challenges as well so we've got to make certain that we interact with every family on a case-by-case -case basis and make certain that they have the resources, the skill, the concentration, the focus, and the organization to be able to take that on. But we'll work with our families every day. Is virtual available for the kids that are in quarantine? Virtual is not available for quarantine because you have to open up from its semester base. So, um, but, we, but going through paper, the 24-7 tutorial that we have to continue the instruction momentum for 6 to 12 and also offering um, teams virtual to tu tutorials for elementary we have that available and we're the first in the state to do both of those it's been great successes as well thank you all right thank you